So, what's going on guys, KDC here, welcome back to a brand new video. And today we are checking out the top 10 best tips and tricks for beginners in Albion Online 2021. There's so much information out in Albion world and this video will debunk all of them and summarize the top 10 most important points aka tips that you must know to get the most out of this game. Each tip will help you and teach you how to make fast silver, is there a difference between widescreen and normal resolution, what zones are the best to find pvp players, what things you need to look for when crafting and buying items and much more. If you're ready to learn a lot of important wisdom in Albion, then watch this video till the end and with that said, let's get right into it. Then the number one tip on my list is to check out Albion Online Test Server, which you can access by going into Albion Launcher, pressing the little arrow icon and selecting Test Server Stagging. So if you're not familiar with it, it basically Albion has only two servers, first one which is the live server where all Albion Line players play the actual real game and the second server which is called the test server which is a basically a place where you can craft anything you want, get unlimited money, unlimited resources and much more. So for new players I recommend before trying out different PvP or PvE builds try them out in this test server because you don't have to spend your own money if you're looking for the best fame spots you can just freely travel throughout the world with zero gankers and on top of all that you can bring your friends to 1v1 in corrupted dungeons or even theory craft on the best way to make money and stuff like that. And don't forget that when even the real server is down which happens every single day for one hour the test server still works. So even if you are lazy then when the game is down you can still play Albion. Then moving over to the second tip in which I will compare widescreen versus normal resolution in Albion. So simply we just take a look at the widescreen picture, let's absorb it for a few seconds and now let's take a look at the other picture which is the normal resolution. You can obviously see that the widescreen gives you about 20 to even 30% bigger vision over your enemies. So should you use it or will I be changing to widescreen? Absolutely no. In my opinion MMORPGs aka this type of games where there's only few spells and don't take that much brain power to play, having to sacrifice a normal resolution which is 1920 by 1080 to a resolution which is 1920 by 800 just to get few more pixels to see a player 0.5 milliseconds faster just isn't good enough for me to change. The only way I see it useful is in ganking, so you see more players and surprise them with you being off screen of their screen, but you sync them in your screen. So you guys decide if you want to change or not, and there are a bunch of plenty of tutorials on how to make a widescreen in Albion, so check it out and let's go to the next step. Okay, so the next tip might seem very selfish or narcissistic, but I recommend for any player to watch my PvP montages. Okay, so wait, let me explain. Albion has over 50 different weapons and especially at the start I don't think you will want to test out each and every single weapon to see what playstyle you want to play and enjoy. So by just watching my videos and seeing high tier gameplay, you will be able to easily decide what weapon you want to use and on top of all of that, if you click on the description of each video, I have even provided the full build gear list and a Twitch streamer to learn more about the build and weapon itself. So this might sound odd but I strongly believe that watching different videos will make you learn faster, you will see if you enjoy the playstyle and you will learn right away the strength and weaknesses of each build. And the final thing I want to mention is that even if you don't like this specific build but maybe only the weapon itself, by just following my videos you will have a really good starting point and after playing the build more you'll be able to comfortably change different gear pieces and much more. Then for the fourth tip it's all about the corrupted dungeons. So let me quickly explain. I strongly believe that no matter what if you are a new or old player, gatherer or pvp'er, corrupted dungeons is the best place to be as a solo player. About 4 months ago, just right after the game released the corrupted dungeons update, I made a video on how to earn super fast silver and fame in corrupted dungeons and this is still the best way I make money. Even lately, with a bit inactive player base, I can easily speedrun 5-6 to six dungeons before a player is invading my dungeon. And personally, I prefer two builds, which are the Great Axe and One Hand Dagger. Both of them will cost about 100 to 150,000 silver and you can make about 1 to 2 million silver an hour. So the One Hand Dagger build is all flat 6 gear hunter hood, hunter's jacket, soldier boots, One Hand Dagger and the torch. And then for the Great Axe build, full 5.1 gear which is scholar's cowl, stalker's jacket, soldier boots and great axe. In my opinion both these builds are super good for the amount of money you spend 
and for more information on what things to do and how to fame farm and for more builds in corrupted dungeons check my full in-depth video after you're done watching this one and have fun making money then the next one is that you don't have to fame farm if you don't want to okay so saying this sounds kind of weird but stay with me just for a second so what i mean by saying this is that you can easily grind money like play the auction house, do black zone ganking, maybe even play arena, gather resources and stuff like that. So what you do is make silver and then place a buy order for tomes of insights, which you can do by going to the auction house, click buy order, find the tome of insights and place how many you want to buy. And usually I go for 2 to 5,000 silver lower than the average market price. And then click place order. My biggest advice and the main point I'm trying to tell you is that, okay, so you can fame farm. As a solo player, you'll have to spend millions of silver for a good 8.3 yellow zone dungeon build or maybe some cheap red zone build, but you have a risk to lose it. Especially if you fame farm by yourself, it will take slow and be long and all that time you could be spending by making money. Because in most cases you don't need anyone to gather, gank and craft to make money and you have no limitations. You can build a huge silver making empire by building islands, buying city plot shops, crafting in demand items and things like that. But on the other hand, if you fame farm by yourself it will be slow, you will have to invest money in the fame farming gear and there will be risk involved that other players can dungeon dive, slow you down and last but not the least and most importantly, after getting to 8.3 gear, there isn't much you can improve your fame per hour. But like I just showed you, making silver an hour can't stop and it doesn't have a limit. So I would say that it's better to be really good at one thing instead of many and buy tomes of insights for your gear and level your build that way up. And speaking of money, the number 6 tip will be on how to make money as a PvE player and number 7 will be how to make silver as a pvp player. So let's take a look at how does a player who mostly plays pve makes money. So first of all the word pve or these three letters combined stand for player versus the environment which starts with anything gathering related, black market, crafting, island farming, fame farming in any type of dungeons and much more. So this type of player main objective is to never die play super safe and instead of having to risk high reward they better play it safe so for example to get 10 million silver a day they would grind for two days with zero risk of losing it when a pvp player would do the same thing just in one day with a lot of risk so recognizing this difference between both player types the best way of making money would be by playing the auction house you can do it by looking at the different items and comparing price between bunch of cities so you travel naked to martlock fort sterling carolian and look at the price difference between the items and you can buy where where it's cheap and sell it where it's more expensive. So basically by just moving one item from one place to another you can make free risk profit. Then another way of making silver is gathering in yellow zones and red zones. So red zones are super safe but mostly very packed with a lot of players. So I would recommend to just look for one specific material like tier 5 wood logs or maybe tier 6 skins and just farm that one thing and refining that material in the best city possible. A good way I made about 100 million silver in just one week was that I found a bridge watch had super overpriced tier 3 refined logs. So I just stayed in yellow zones as I am a tier 8 wood gatherer I just kept on gathering the tier 3 logs which was super fast and I could carry a lot. So I just sold them and made bunch of money by looking at what was the best thing to sell and then basically the top 10 to 20 stacks of logs were the ones I was selling so anyone interested in only tier 3 logs was buying from me and I was purely focusing on one thing and I made a lot of money. So with all of this said there's a lot of ways to make money as a PvE player so just look for safe and still efficient way to dominate one specific thing and good luck. And now the second part aka the seventh tip is how to make money as a PvP player. So obviously PvP stands for player versus player which means that anything starting with 2v2 Hellgates to 1v1 corrupted dungeons, even open world ganking and much more. So in my opinion any time when a high risk high reward is included there are two best ways to make money. So either way you buy 10 super cheap 50 to 100 thousand builds or on the other hand buy one build for 1 million or more and then do the exact same thing. So by following one of these two ways, the first way with 10 cheap builds will probably kill you 50% of the time. So the main point is to keep on doing it till you kill other players or get free noobs to kill and make money that way. Or on the other hand, follow the second way of dramatically outgearing the opponents, which will make you win a lot of fights, but the one you will lose, it will be worth 10 sets. So by just going all in in one round or going small in 10 different rounds I found works the best to make money as a solo player so just try them both see what type of player you are and if you specifically ask what activity is the best for fast money I would recommend for solo players either way corrupted dungeons or solo ganking 
Then for a duo player, so just you with one more friend, do a black zone ganking or 2v2 Hellgates. And for groups of 5 or even more, do Roads of Avalon, 5v5 GVGs and 5v5 Hellgates. As there isn't one specific best way or place to make money, so just decide which one you want to do and have fun. Then one of the last tips, aka the number 8, is to not forget to use your friend list, season and general ranking and gear inspection to your best advantage. So first of all, if you didn't know by clicking on the player character and pressing Y key on your keyboard, it will automatically open the player's gear. So a lot of times people ask me on how I know what build are you running or what the type of 10 best corrupted dungeons players are using and you have always had a way or aka the option to use it for yourself. So first of all you can click a name in the chat and right click it and click inspect to see their stats. And then pressing down the tabs you can see the last 3 to 4 deaths they died, what specifically they were wearing and stuff like that. And by doing this simple trick you know now what build they are using and even more information about them specifically if you are a good player you will use it to your best advantage. Then another way to check a player's stats or what he's using, for example we will take my alt account which in game name is Wonky Sage. So you just type his name in your friend list, click on his icon and now you can see what build was he wearing when he died or killed other players. What are his fame and pvp stats and when you are done so the other player doesn't know that you just checked him out, click unfriend or cancel the friend request and they will never know. And of course the last few ways of checking other people out is in leaderboards so choose highest infamy, highest pvp fame or whatever. Pick one player you want to inspect and see everything about them. And then last but not the least in 1v1 fights, by pressing the player and pressing Y button on the keyboard you can even see what spells is he using. So depending on that you might want to change your playstyle or your own spells. But yeah, in short I just wanted you to know that this is a big thing that you can use it so here it is. Then for the number 9 I want to look at the actual player themselves and I want you to think about few things. So by knowing a player you can predict what things he is mostly likely to do and what not. So this tip may apply to anything in the game. Maybe you are looking for the best fame farming spot but there are so many zones and dungeons to choose from so which one is the best. What I usually do is I look at how populated and popular the zones are and which are the best places that many players are likely to play in and which not. So look for zones that would be hard or long to reach, usually those areas are in middle of borders of the map because anyone can just easily move one zone from their city to a yellow zone but will a player bother to go 4 to 5 zones in the left or right direction just for better and more quieter place for fame or gathering and most of the time the answer is big no. Gamers are really lazy and very predictable so if you want to know what is the best way of doing something or just best place to go think about what would be the fastest way of doing it and then think about what would be the hardest one or maybe just most annoying one and pick the one which is the annoying one. This is a simple principle that allows me to gather in black zones with zero risk and finding the best places to fame farm and now you know too. And with that said now we have come to the last step aka the number 10 which is that I recommend for you to know all the small features and details that the game has to offer. So let me explain. Did you know that by pressing N or opening your minimap in a city you can press a specific type of shop so maybe leather or stone and only the stone or whatever you shop you selected will light up and the rest of the shops will go grey. Well this is a small but a nice and neat feature which can save you a few minutes every single day by just looking at the best and cheapest shops and now you know a fast way just to click and select one shop not look at hundreds of shops but just the ones you need, go refine your materials and thank me later. These and many more features are hidden in the game and to be honest, thinking about it, if I get enough support for this video, I might make a specific video on the top 20 or 10 best hidden features in Albion Online. So if you want to see that, comment anything in the comment section down below for the YouTube algorithm and don't forget to leave a like, subscribe so you wouldn't miss any more amazing PvP montages, funny moments compilations or anything else. With all of this said, have an amazing day and I will catch you in the next video. Take it easy, peace. Yo, I ain't here for the money.